So today's video, I'm going to be telling more of a story than I'm really going to be telling you about products. So at the beginning here with foundation and concealer, y'all kind of know how to put it on. So I'm just going to skip over that part. But what I wanted to talk about today is kind of the effects and the dangers of actual skin cancer. So when I was coming into college, uh, my dad was diagnosed. Throughout my ring ceremony was, I think, the last time I remember him being not ill. I went off to church camp and during that time was when he went to the doctor and they found a lump behind his ear. He was always very persistent about going to the dermatologist anytime something came up. He always had spots burned off so he he, he took care of himself and it was just one of those freak things that happened um, no matter how much he took care of himself. So um, he had it removed and I don't really have much detail because my parents didn't really want to worry me while I was actually in school too much about everything that was going on. They wanted me to focus on my first year. So I remember distinctly I was getting into the shower and we all know when we get into the shower we actually do something else for like 40 minutes. Right here I'm just putting on some yellow eyeshadow to kind of set down some color on my eye. And I got a call from my dad, and he told me he told me that he was sick. He was going to be okay. Um, he was going to have to go through chemo and radiation, and all this stuff. And they may have to take fat from different parts of his body to um, give him skin and nerve back to where that tumor was going to be taken out. Now I'm just taking some gold liquid liner and I'm going to begin drawing out in geometrical shapes the sun that I'm going to be doing. So I got that call and I just remember my whole entire world falling apart because I was going through a terrible breakup and my mom had had major, major surgery and my grandma had major surgery so freshman year was probably the worst year of my life. A couple of weeks passed and my sorority had family weekend and obviously my parents couldn't come because my dad had just had the tumor removed so I went home and I surprised him and he had this like liquid draining tube on him. Um, kind of attached him. He was really slow. He was really tired. Um, you could tell that he was in a lot of pain and it was the start to a very, very long process. A couple more weeks passed and it's Thanksgiving time and to go through his radiation, he had to have teeth pulled, the back teeth pulled on both sides of his face. So for Thanksgiving that year, we had mashed potatoes and ice cream. And a couple weeks later, he would start his chemo and radiation. And that was around Christmas time when I came home for five weeks for Christmas break. He started his chemotherapy while I was at home for Christmas and I didn't want to go see it. I didn't want to know what it was like. I just, I knew that I couldn't handle it. So he was very, very tired all the time. He was working the best he could from home. He, his coworkers and his customers understood the fact that, you know, he was too tired to go into work every single day. So they were working really well with him being at home during this time. And then I'm just going to be adding some lash glue onto my eyebrows so I can stick this gold foil on top. He also started radiation during this time as well. And he finished chemo a couple weeks after I went back to school, but he was so tired, but you could tell that he was fighting with cancer. A lot of it is you have to have a positive attitude. If they tell you you have a week to live, well, you need to make that the best week of your life because a lot of times if you're positive, you will fight it and you will win. Adding that same gold liner onto my eyes for my wing and I will be applying some false lashes. He had squamous skin cancer, which is a little bit different than melanoma. They ended up not having to remove any skin from a different part of his body to cover up where the tumor was taken out but he did lose the nerve in that side of his face he kind of had a crooked smile and he couldn't shave that side of his face because he can't he can't fill anything over there so for a while he did look like heisenberg for one christmas i got him a heisenberg sweatshirt because they looked like twins with his hair growing out on his face it was bright orange so they were pretty much twins I'm going to add some fake freckles to my face and I'm also going to be tracing the natural eye bag I have on my eye and making it darker. And I got him blue jolly, like a hundred blue jolly answers because I couldn't, you know, buy him any meth, but I wanted him, I wanted to make him smile and that was his favorite TV show at the time. So obviously it took him a long time to start feeling better. He still... He's still tired, I think he is, um, but he's doing so well right now. He This past year, he actually um, had 
constructive surgery on his ear when they took the tumor out his ear was pretty much moved a couple inches up onto his face so that they could get the tumor out of the way now i'm going to take some brown and mauve body paint and i'm going to start creating sunspots on my face sunspots are the sun damage that you get so a lot of people have big freckles or moles or some people will get some discoloration spots on their skin the they had to move his ear pretty much on top of his face so it was like that for a little bit over a year and so he had reconstructive surgery they moved it back i i think he still uh looks the same as he did before he before all this even happened he's still so handsome to me but i know he was happy about that and later on he will be getting new teeth um he kind of had to learn how to chew with the front of his mouth because he had no teeth in the back to chew with so he is doing much, much better now. He did everything right. He wore sunscreen. He went to the dermatologist. He took care of himself. But he was just one of the unlucky ones who got hit with a really ugly cancer. And it took a toll on a lot of us. It took a major toll on him. He knew that he could fight it. He knew that he could win. And he fought it. And he won because of his positive attitude. People don't realize how serious skin cancer truly can be because the only stories you really hear about with skin cancer are people just get that spot burned off or they go under the knife get it cut out and they're good to go but personally this was the first case I had ever heard of somebody going through chemo and radiation and having reconstructive surgery and having things pulled so it was definitely an eye-opener to me about how scary skin cancer can actually be and it's not just getting something cut out of your face. Skin cancer is actually the most common cancer in the United States. One out of five develop skin cancer in their lifetime. That may be genetics. It may be because they don't wear sunscreen or it may just be you were unlucky like my dad was. Squamous skin cancer, the kind that my dad had, is, is a highly curable cancer. If it is detected early, like, like any cancer, if you find it early, you have better chances of success with the treatment and with survival but you know sometimes if you catch it a little bit too late or you just don't know it's there some people have cancer and they never know it so it's very important to always check out your skin if you see a freckle that comes up and you think it may be a little iffy you need to go to the dermatologist and you need to get it checked out because in these kind of situations it's better safe than sorry that's what my dad did he saw a lump he knew it wasn't supposed to be there, so he went to the doctor. It worked out in his favor because he took care of his skin. He knew what to look for. If something was off, he, he was in the dermatologist's office the next day. I kind of wanted to explain my chest piece. This swirl that I'm doing, that the shades are very dark. They're not bright. Uh, they're not happy colors. They're just reds, browns, grays, mauves types, co type of colors. And this swirl, to me, is representing chemo because chemo is poison. It is putting poison into your body. With my dad, his was high enough in his uh, chest area um, to where they could treat it. I believe it's if it's chest up, you can use chemo. Chest down, you can't. I don't know if that is for all cancers, but for his situation, it was. So he got lucky and his was chest up so he could use that chemotherapy that was needed for him. So these swirls, this big swirl right here, starting from the middle, is representing chemo. It is poison to your body. It is killing off that bad cancer. So here I start adding on a few bright colors. I'm just applying some body paint with a little sponge. These bright colors represent new life. They represent survival and fight and willpower to live. Colors represent the new life that comes from chemotherapy. It represents the happiness that it brings family, the joy that it brings the patient because they fought and they are able to survive. And it even represents those who didn't make it through and they didn't live through their cancer because they still fought and they, they fought with every part of their body. Even though they did not make it, the people in their family, the people around them, their friends, everyone knows how hard they fought. So these colors are representing the fight that these people have fought. It is not an easy fight. It is a painful fight. I remember my dad always being tired. It was hard for him to eat. He didn't want to eat. Um, him just being in pain, it was hard for him to get up. He, 
it was just very painful to watch and I wasn't the one going through it. So I can't even begin to imagine the pain that he went through. Seeing him today, I'm glad that he went through that pain because I was able to keep my dad and I was able to keep my best friend and I have a lot of friends whose parents and family members, boyfriends and parents have gone through chemo, have gone through radiation and they understand how hard it is to watch that person go through it. But seeing them at the end of the day, being at the dinner table, being able to come home, it's it's an unexplainable feeling. People who have not made it through cancer and they fought with everything that they had, but their story is there to motivate people and to show people, hey, this man, this woman, they fought the fight and they lived a beautiful life and they lived their life to the fullest every single day. I want each and every one of you to live every single day to its absolute fullest because the chances that one of us will get sick one day is high and it may not be with skin cancer, it may not be with cancer at all, but there's people all around us in our everyday life that have terminally ill diseases and diseases that they are having to fight with doctors and medicine and treatment. Cancer patients or terminally ill patients are people who are great examples of they live their daily life every single day to the absolute fullest and they take nothing for granted at all. So I'm going to add just a little bit of silver foil to the center of the swirl and I'm also going to outline it a little bit more with some black paint. Hope you guys are able to keep fighting if you are fighting. If you know somebody who is going through cancer, make sure that they know that they are loved. Make sure that they know that they are strong enough to continue the fight. They are worth it and that you love them.